News for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, musers? John with Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And welcome to the GSAP and Adobe Muse series. So I've decided to create this series to showcase the power of the Muse Motion widget and the Muse Motion 2 widget. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with GSAP, um, it is it stands for the Greenstock Animation Platform, and it's basically one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, animation platform on the web. And many web developers in, in the web community use this uh, animation platform to add really unique effects to websites. So I've decided to make I've decided to make it a goal of mine to integrate that powerful platform into Adobe Muse with these widgets. So I want to keep evolving these widgets, keep you know adding different things you can do with it. Uh, so that you can add these really cool animations to your website. So if you're not familiar with Greensock, you can just go to greensock.com and you can check it out. So a lot of these really cool animations that you see on websites are powered by the Greensock animation platform. So uh, yeah, with Muse Motion 2, and I'll get to the animation that I'm gonna showcase in a second. Uh, if you go to museforyoushop.com, we have the Muse Motion 2. Uh, Muse Motion 2 is more for sequencing animations. Uh, so like if you go to the preview page, um, you'll see that the M comes in, the U, the S, the E, and then motion, and then two. And then we have the, the Muse Motion widget, which is also using the GSAP uh, here. So if I preview, you can rotate, scale, skew, translate, and combine different elements. So this these widgets are really powerful, and Greensock is yeah just an amazing animation platform. So I've decided to create the series. I'll be creating uh, a few few videos every week on different animations that can be achieved with the Muse Motion widget and the Muse Motion 2 widget. So this is the first uh, video in the series, and it's just a quick animation. So here we see it says animation made easy. If I refresh, so let me preview again in Muse we can see that that rectangle gets wider and then as it goes back, the animation made easy text uh, appears. And I also have this on scroll. So with the Muse Motion, we're using the Muse Motion widget for this and there was just a, an update today. There's a new on scroll setup and there's a few more motions that you can do with the widget. So here we have a scroll example. So I'll preview that. And animation made easy, if I scroll with Muse Motion, powered by GSAP from Greensock. All right, so we'll, we'll be recreating this in this tutorial. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to give an introduction to the GSAP and Adobe Muse series. It's gonna be a really fun series, and I'm excited to showcase all the different animations that can be achieved with the Muse Motion widget and the Muse Motion 2 widget powered by GSAP from Greensock. So let's go ahead and jump in into recreating this. I'll just create a new site in Adobe Muse and I'll click OK, and I'll double click on the home page. So the first thing I wanna do here is create a rectangle. So I'll just draw a rectangle just like this, and let's fill it. So I'm gonna grab this color here, and I'll just fill it with this color. Okay, and then I wanna add some text. So I wanna say here, I'll just create a text box, and I'll say animation made easy. I'll highlight that, change the font. Uh, let's use Futura here. And we'll make it a little bit larger. Let's try 72. Yep, looks good. And I'll just place that there. So now I'll bring in the Muse Motion widget. So I'll go to the library panel here to the right. And if you don't see the library panel, you can go to Window and click on Library. So here I'll type in Muse Motion. And here we have the Muse Motion widget 1.2. Okay. If you're part of the subscription, you'll receive a notification tomorrow. Um, it is in the subscription though, so you can just download it. And if you did purchase individually, you can just re-download it from the link that was sent when you first purchased the widget. And you'll be able to download the latest version of the Muse Motion widget. So now I'll drag in the Muse Motion widget and just place it here to the left. And there we go. So with these two elements, I wanna give them each a unique graphic style name. So I'll start with this element here on the left, 
uh, this rectangle and I'm going to give it the graphic style name motion one uh, because that's the widget we placed here and we're going to assign a motion uh, to this element with the graphic style name motion one. So I'll select the rectangle, I'll go to the graphic styles panel here to the right and if you don't see the graphic styles panel you can go to window and click on graphic styles and here I'll create a new graphic style by clicking on this icon I'll double click on style and I'll rename this to motion one I'll click OK and now whatever properties I apply to the widget it, it will be applied to that rectangle alright so with this rectangle I just want to change the width to, to be larger so I'll go to the width section I'll enable width and I want the animation start to be two, so I want to go. I want it to go from its current position to 800 pixels, so it becomes wider. Okay, and that's all I have to do there. Oh, also the duration. I want it to be 0.5. I don't want it to take two seconds to become 800 pixels in width. So in 0.5 seconds or 500 milliseconds, it's going to become 800 pixels in width. So we have this option here. Um, in the previous versions of the widget, it was called some, something different, but it's actually called uh, yo-yo, which means it'll play forward and then back. In order for the yo-yo to take effect, we want the repeat to be one. So we want it to go forward, and then it's going to repeat, but then it's going to go backwards. So we set the repeat to one. And that's basically it. That's all we have to do there. So now if I preview, I go to File, Preview Page, and Browser that rectangle is going to become 800 pixels in width and then go back. Perfect. So now for the text here. So what I did with the text, I copied uh, this motion widget here and I changed the graphic style name to uh, motion 2. So in the graphic style name, set it to motion 2 and then I'll apply the motion 2 graphic style name to this text. So I'll go to the graphic styles panel with the text selected. I'll go to the graphic styles panel, create a new style double click and call this motion two. okay now what I want to do here is change this text to white so it blends in with the background and you can't see it initially so I'll say white here for the text and then I'll go into the widget and I'm gonna go into the width property and uncheck enable width because we're not gonna work with the width and I'm gonna go to font color and say enable font color so for this I want it to be black uh, for the font color and the duration, I'm gonna say, actually I'm gonna add a delay of 0.5. So that rectangle first extends out. And then after it extends out, the text is gonna turn black and we're gonna see the text reveal itself. So we'll say 0.5 and then for the duration, we'll say zero. I don't want there to be like an animation before it appears. So set the duration to zero and that's basically it. And then for the repeat, I'm gonna say zero. We don't need this uh, animation to repeat. Uh, and that's it. So now if I go to File, Preview, Page, and Browser, or Site, we see uh, it turns, it goes from white to black. So because this rectangle is behind the text, I want to bring the text behind the rectangle. So I'm going to right click, arrange, and send to back. And now I'll preview. And just like that, perfect. So now that rectangle is above the text. So it extends out, and then the text reveals once it goes back. All right, so it's just that simple. It could make for a really nice website. Um, you know, having this unique animation the user can visit, and the first thing they see is this nice animation of the rectangle getting larger and then revealing text as it goes back. So uh, that's it for that animation. Now let's work with the on scroll. So with the on scroll, I'm just going to copy these elements. Hit Command C to copy, and then Command V to paste, and I'm just going to change the text. So animation made easy uh, with Muse Motion just like that and now I'm going to change the graphic style names for both of these so I'm gonna say graphic style 3 or motion 3 and then motion 4 so I'll select this uh, rectangle here create a new graphic style double click and call it motion 3 I'll select uh, this text create a new graphic style and I'll call this motion 4 and then I'll copy these two widgets copy and paste place them here to the left and I'll change the graphic style names here. So I'll say motion three and motion four. So the properties are the same for both of these elements. I just want to ch uh, change the select motion start 
to on scroll instead of on load. So you can do on load, on hover, on hover with reverse, on click, or on scroll. So I'm gonna set it to on scroll, and then I'm gonna to go to the on scroll section here within the widget. So here we have the new on scroll widget options. So you can start the animation when it's fully in the viewport, so it's fully within the browser, or you can say partially, uh, when it partially enters the viewport. Uh, and then you can stop the animation when you fully exit the viewport or partially exit the viewport. Uh, you can set offsets in pixels. Uh, if you want the offset to go into the browser, you would add a negative value uh, for the offset. And you can play once, restart on entrance, and then pause on exit. Yeah, pause on exit. And here are uh, here's a bit more information or a reference on the on scroll section. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see how that looks. We've changed the uh, the start to on scroll for both of them. So motion three and motion four are now on scroll. So I'll preview, and we have the first one, and then we have the second one. So with on scroll, you want to have enough distance between elements. You want to make sure that the the element is a vi isn't visible in the browser first, so it doesn't uh, show and just appears on scroll. So there's the first one, there's the second one, perfect. So as I scroll, it shows. And I have it repeating, so it repeats. I actually only want these elements to show once. So I'll say on scroll and I'll say play once there. So I wanna uncheck restart on entrance and I'll go in here on scroll and uncheck restart on entrance and say play once, okay? and then I'll preview and there we go perfect looks good so yeah let's do that one more time let me close these here there's the first one as I scroll and the second one perfect so let's do this one more time and that will be it for this animation sequence do something like that and I'll just copy the widgets copy motion three and four paste them in there, and then just change the graphic style name here. So I'll say motion five and motion six, okay? Then I'll select the rectangle here and create a new graphic style name, say motion five and motion, motion six, okay? And I'm gonna cover the instance number really quick. If your on scroll uh, settings were different for each widget, you would wanna have a unique instance number for the widget. If the settings are the same, the instance number can be the same if the on scroll settings are the same. So we do have the same on scroll settings for both of these. So I just left it to on scroll, uh, the instance number to one for um, all the on scroll widgets. So now I'll preview. And there we have it, uh, animation made easy with Muse Motion. With, well, let me change the text here. Powered by GSAP from Greensock. Yep, looks good. And I'll add a bit more uh, scroll space down here. Okay, animation made easy with Muse Motion powered by GSAP from Greensock. All right, looks good. And also with the new update, the animations now work across all breakpoints. So I could say, you know, like 700 at a breakpoint there. And, you know, I'd probably change the resize options for some of these elements, but um, there we go. And looks good. So I'll preview in the browser and let me resize here. And yeah, let me look at the browser width. It's at 699. So there we go with Muse Motion powered by GSAP from Greensock. So the animations now work across all breakpoints and you do have the option to disable the animation at a certain breakpoint here within the breakpoint option. So you can disable at breakpoint and disable when the breakpoint is less than this value here. Um, what you could also do is that uh, on your mobile layout, so let's say I had a mobile layout at 480, um, I could just hide those elements that had motion applied to them. So I could select all those elements, hide and breakpoint, and just have a clean layout for um, for my mobile, mobile breakpoint. So there we go, and it's gone there. And I would probably set these elements to not be responsive. So I'll say responsive in the resize option. 
I'll say none so they don't uh, move as the browser resizes and the same here and I'll say none okay and I'll preview and there we go so animation made easy with Muse Motion powered by GSAP from Greensock. All right, so that's the first video in the GSAP and Adobe Muse series. Uh, hopefully that was a good intro. I am really excited about the series. I think you can do a lot with these widgets and I wanna keep evolving these widgets and just make it so you can add some really amazing animations and a lot of interesting user interactions with, uh, with these widgets. So uh, that's it for this video tutorial. To gain access to the Muse Motion widget and the Muse Motion 2 widget, you can go to museforyoushop.com. Here you can click subscribe today. And here you can click subscribe now to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. And here we have the Muse Motion widget and the Muse Motion, or that was the Muse Motion 2 widget here. And then we have the Muse Motion widget that we just worked with today. Uh, so here's the widget and here you can click add to cart to purchase individually or again you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you. News for you, awesome websites without code.